My name is James Mitchell. I was born in Pop River, 1945. I was in uh, residential school for, for four years. When I was a young man, I traveled with Dad. He was, uh, he was a trapper and uh, he was a hunter. My name is Noel Bruce. I was born in Popper, and I went to residential school in Fort Alec. And when I was little, my dad used to hunt and trap. He taught me a lot of things about surviving the bus. So. My name is Albert Bittern. I went to residential school in Cross Lake. I remember we lived on the uh, wild uh, chickens and beaver, moose, muskrat, wild rice. That's good. Hey, my name is Francis Valicat, and I went to school in Norway House Residential School. That's what I can remember about my dad. He was good to us. He tried to uh, look after us too. Well, they put us in the residential school because he was getting, he was sick, he wasn't well, so they had to put us somewhere. There was just two of us, me and my brother was two years older than I am. My name is John McDonough. I was born 1931 in a residential school in Nora House. I stayed in a bush. That's where you get living with my dad and my mom. He told me my dad that out of driving. Yeah, I remember that. My name is Elizabeth Bruce. I was at the Central School of Boat there for five years anyway, so I remember. My mom used to teach us how to sew. And they always go trapping in a, uh, in a fall. Oh, my name is Abel Bruce. I was born in Poplar River. I was growing up, I went to the residential school about four or five years. Sometimes I get back those memories now to do, you know. My dad used to make things to make us uh, little things. And in the summertime, he used to make planes, airplanes with wood, you know, carved with wood and all that, you know. Airplane used to float in the water, used to sardine cans for pontoons. That's what I was growing up. We were growing up. When we left, I remember that time when we left. We saw a big plane we were flying around, and we were playing a outside. My mom came and got us, and the priest said we had to go. Go where? And me and my little brother didn't know where we were going. They took us off from the treaty ground and took us down. So I had to hold them because they was kind of scared there. Marched up to this big building. It was four stories high. There was four stories on this building. And uh, I didn't know what to think either. I was scared because I had never been anywhere before. When we got there, we were taken to the dormitory. The, the nuns were there and the priest. Took all our clothes off and they washed our hair. And I used to have long hair. And they shaved my head right away. So that I could not forget. So. And then I never seen a plush toilet in my life, and and they took me to the bathroom and made me sit on this thing. And when they flushed it, it uh, sounded like a big monster gurgling down, down, and oh, uh, that was scary. I was lonely the first time I got there. Well, but after that, when I saw some kids playing, yeah, so I uh, I rather stay here too. <laughs> Yeah. We started going to school there, like uh, every day. For a, we we weren't brought home for two years. It was a big building, big stone gray building. They kept the girls on the other side, so us on this side. So, and the only time we saw them was a uh, dream. Outside, uh, there was a big playground, there was a big fence there. 
I used to go and talk to my sister near the side of that fence, and they got me out of there. We couldn't even talk to my brother except through the fence or wave at him from across the dining room, stuff like that. We were kept apart, like I don't know why that was, but... You work hard. Any kind of... They clean a barn, horses, cows, any kind of... any kind of animals. There was a night at church there. That's where they took us every Sunday. Nobody would be staying. All the boys and girls would go to the, fill up the church there. There was another church, not very far from where we were. But I think it was an Anglican or Protestant. The nun we used to tell, we used to tell us, never go to that church. It's no good. My grandfather had told me. They said, there's only one God. They're praying to the same God, the same God we're praying. I told them none. That's what my grandfather said to me, do. Get a lock on my head. Never say that, he said. After that, it was, I don't know, couldn't grasp a lot of things. I still do. It's kind of lonely at nights, and we sent you to bed around six thirty in the in the evening. So you get up around five thirty in the morning, early in the morning. You know, it's... like in the morning, if somebody doesn't get up, yeah, a supervisor will come and just tip over our bed and everything, mattress and everything. <laughs> And I had to, yeah, and I had to fix a bed after after we did it. And we learned to get up early in the morning. And I look at the food. What was this we were eating, you know? It looked like soup anyway, but this like soup. You weren't supposed to steal, but you were so hungry sometimes, eh? And they had a cellar where they used to keep vegetables all the time. So I snuck down there and I found a nice big, nice turnip and I got across the dining room floor, but then I heard somebody coming. Oh boy, I'm going to get caught with my turnip. <laughs> but I didn't get caught with the turnip. I probably would have got a good dropping, I guess, stealing a turnip, but I was hungry. <laughs> there used to be a chief there by the name of um, Alec Duncan. We were in a fence. No, we were in a fence. Nobody was allowed out of the fence. And uh, this old chief would come around. There used to be a little bus here, and he would come around with bannock and put uh, peanut butter or, or jam to come and feed little kids in there to, to which are hungry. And uh, sometimes I used to go there too. Yeah, too <laughs> but we were caught, caught. Yeah. We, were, we got punished for that. And so uh, we didn't. We stop it. I never heard anything about my culture. We were told we were pagans, savages. They sort of made you think you were no good, like uh, you're Indian, Indians are no good, stuff like that, eh? It made you, put you down, sort of. English, we were told, told to talk English, you know, talk English. You get caught speaking Cree, you got a good strapping for it, so, you know, you had to be very careful. Used to see these movies, Western movies, Cowboys and Indians. Oh, uh, we were rooting for the white guy there. Uh, we were, you know, kill those guys, kill those guys. Here I am talking to the kid, white man to kill us. <laughs> I didn't want to be an Indian, I wanted to be a cowboy. <laughs> it wasn't that bad really, but there was a, 
a special place where they used to put children that was, uh, I don't know what you'd have to do to get in that place. It was, I've seen a few children put in there. It's just a room like 10 by 10, no lights, no window, nothing. It was sort of like solitary confinement, I guess. There's an island, a Norway house, in Play Green Island. And they used to go and drop us off there with the food and uh, we would be there a week. <laughs> we used to have fun. But the thing was, we had to have a bath there. Eh? And uh, I didn't want to go. And uh, they grabbed me and threw me in. Oh, when I hit that water, it was cold. <laughs> They gave me a strap in both hands, lots of them, five times, which is a thicker, thicker strap. Yeah, it's very hard for me after, eh? I couldn't sleep, my hands were red, eh? Because it is in a school, no good. That's when I get sick. When it does, it goes on my back, goes on my chest, goes on my, <coughs> my legs, banging stomach, depleting my legs. That strap, it's sharp, stick that strap. Put an inch, put this much, stick that strap. There were three of us girls. We were supposed to get our tonsils out, but uh, there was a hospital um, not that far away. They could have took us there, but they just laid us out on a table in that school and the doctor came there and took our tonsils out. Yeah, I didn't even put us in the hospital. I woke up coughing up blood and everything and nobody seemed to care. It's a good thing we were tough and didn't get infection. I guess I wouldn't be here today. Well, that's where I get something just in here. But I lay down in the bed. He told me that guys he came from the first war. He dropped that tissue field. <laughs> That's what he used to that guy. That's what I get habit like this. He burned me. So he's getting played a little bit. Well, I was there. Uh, I was. Uh, Physical assaulted and verbal verbal abuse as well, and most and sometimes you know sexual assault or sexual abuse. Or, there were three of us. We are close, able. Richard and me, really. One day, one, one fall, it was probably cold, about this time of the year. Richard went missing at night. Couldn't find him. We were out there searching for him. Couldn't. Uh, next, more next day, we went to church as if nothing happened. All of a sudden he walks in. The Fred away, the brother went and took grab him by here. Took him to go and change. And here he was lost at night. But later on he told us why. Said, uh, that brother uh, was the one. He used to have an old barn there. And he tried, took me there, and uh, I ran away from him. There was a, a janitor there, you know. He used to work for a janitor. That guy used to work for a janitor. And this guy there, uh, he asked, she asked us to go to the office, principal's office. Me and my me and my cousin. So I went to that office. She's physically and mentally and spiritually 
and physical abuse, sexual abuse. That's what he did to me. And after that, when she, that uh, janitor done what he did to me and all that, you know, she locked me in a locker in a dormitory for two days. I was there in two days in a dormitory in a locker. So, so I guess I didn't know what was going on. I didn't even know. We snuck out one night and hitchhiked on the highway to Winnipeg. I was there for about four days, then they found me, and then they took me back. They took me back to Fort Alec. Um, they took away everything, you know, my privileges. You know. Oh, like this. Something I'll never forget. He started potatoes, that's what he get, that trouble. When I get spanked, no clothes. What I, that's what I get running away. So much hurt me, that guy's strap. Twelve miles, I'm running away that, no, half, more since he torn, that I used to suck. I'm running away that 12 miles an hour, I made it. I was a fast train that time. They're after me that deep dogs. Come and get me. That's why they caught me, that guy. Boy, I heard that thing. Sometimes I get up at night when I think about it, you know. If I have nightmares, I just get out of bed and go to the kitchen. I sit in the dark for a long, long time, so. Just thinking about it, and, and this is where the anger comes out. Huh? You know, even my friends he said, "Tell me you're walking time bomb." You know, uh, we can't even tease you now. He said, "You yeah. change a lot <laughs> because the residents of school said to him, I'm trying to explain to them." Huh? Even when I hear kids in school now today crying in the hallway, I just plug my ears. I don't want to hear that. Because I had that too when I was not with the school. I don't want to hear that cry anymore. I've never talked to my family, my kids about that. They didn't, they didn't even know I went to residential school till a couple, few years ago. I never mentioned it to them. Yeah, I got 10 children. I didn't know how to hug my children. I know that for sure. I could never hug them and kiss them and you know what you do, a normal person would do that, but I don't think I ever done that too. They probably think I don't love them to this day, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I lost my son in 1999. He committed suicide. I'll tell you why. I should have done, I should have done this. I should have done it too. Talking what happened to me, you know, in that prison school and all that, you know. I blame myself. When we had that healing camp in Weaverlake, it was time for me to let everything go, you know. I had so much of it in here that was hurting. For 40 years, I kept this going. 40 years. I thought I'll never get it out. We believe was good. The way it was set was not only for the residential schools for us, but for the people in general, like the families of the residents and all these, like our kids, you know, to know what happened. 
the little young people start to recognize their uh, culture and you know. A lot of them said, oh, we didn't know that we do. I told them we, that we had to, us, we lost it when we were in residential school. We were never taught things like this. And it was good for us. But my daughter, my granddaughter there, Tara, was with me that time. And yep. uh, I was, I was talking about what happened to me. Eh? Then, like I said, I never talked to my family about that. And I guess she was overwhelmed and she was just crying. She didn't know, you know, she was sad. But I didn't intend to make her sad, but that's how it happened, you know. We're healing. I know I'm healing. Otherwise, I, I don't know what I would have done if I didn't go to a healing foundation workshops and gatherings, you know. I would have been a pretty lost person, I think. Sometimes it brings relief when you talk about it. You know, it's, it's supposed to be a sharing circle, you know. It feels good to share some of your experiences. I know some people have difficulties with their, with their hurt that they had there. But me, I work hard for it. I want to get through with it. That's what I did. It's time for me to step with my own two feet and let myself go. That's what I said. That's what I did. I'm not fighting for what the resident school did there. Yeah. It was uh, some uh, some other kids, uh, how they were looked after. I'm not against any church. No, that's one thing I never do that. I never quit going to church because you can go there and um, listen to a lot of stuff, listen to good things you're supposed to do. Like you're supposed to forgive people, you can't uh, go on hating people and not forgiving them, like, you know. I think it's very important to forgive. I used to say that God forgives, but I don't. I still don't forgive. I still have that resentment. I still have that anger inside me. Maybe, I don't know, something. But it's slowly. I am slowly recovering. I could forgive people, I could forgive them, but I'll never forget. I didn't blame the church. Did you forgive them? Uh, yeah. For forgiveness is not good. Sometimes I hear people talking about that, you know, how to forgive, forgiveness. That's how it is. I didn't really uh, let go all of my what happened. And it's still inside me. It really is uh, painful, really painful. I have nightmares about it. I still do. I don't know if I ever said for forgive to forgive what happened, but I don't think I can. When it says what I say, what I did, pray, peace and love. That's what I do. Everybody. <laughs>